So I've started building the uh, new riser tube incorporating a vortex so the front there is the that's the back of the firebox the hole in the back of the firebox and I've funneled what I intend to do is funnel all the flame back into the side of the tube there and what I've done is I've increased the height at the back my, f my figuring is that if I can throw the heat and the flames narrower and higher against the wall it'll create a better vortex so the actual volume of air moving through that channel at the back there is less than the volume that's entering there so it should create more suction in that little neck and um, it should throw it should throw it round a hell of a lot quicker so I've just got to weld all this up now on the tube the patch there was a, an error because I was going to have the box going straight through you can see where I cut it there and I changed this at the last minute to do it like that inside I'll take that off and inside that uh, chamber will be this plate you can see that the box the air enters the tube I'm going to weld that plate on the back of there so that it the air comes in and then it throws it back round again so the flame once it's traveled round this side it's this plate and then rejoins the stream as it comes in hopefully creating a better spiral coming to the top I've also got some smaller stainless tube here which I'm gonna maybe fit to the center there and I'm going to have that as an extra air intake and I'm going to drill holes into that in a spiral pattern as trying too hard suggested so I'll I'll drill holes in a spiral I'm not going to go very high into the box I've, these are just some bits that a mate gave me so I'm going to I'm going to weld two together like that because it just broke, broke me these short pieces so I'm going to weld two together and I'm going to have it maybe just going halfway up the tube and that'll be it so I'll get this welded together well it's test day I've tagged the firebox just uh, on the front I've not attached it it's literally just pushed on and I've wrapped a load of ceramic wool around it just to keep it sort of airtight I'm not going to bother with the top the riser tube is in I've put the shroud around it I've put the perlite in can you see in the bottom yes just see inside the bottom of the tube it's sat on it again on an old saw blade so I can put the internal maypole pole thing in uh, and I'm going to light it so we'll see what happens now I've got a fire going it's been lit literally two three minutes it's just all starting to burn in there but it's not that dry but it's burning this thing is just starting to get blistering hot. It's a very clean burn. There's bits of smoke coming off it, but that seems to be coming off the perlite. You can just see the smoke coming off the little patch I've welded on that stainless outer pipe. And that's coming from the inside, not from the actual top of the flue. So we'll just have a look in the top. It's like Dante's Inferno in there. See all the fire swirling around. The bottom of the stainless pipe, you can see it from there, not with this camera, it's just starting to glow cherry red, which is a bit frightening. <laughs> I think the stainless will stand up to it. I'm 
I'm going to try now and take off the bottom um, bit of insulation I've got under that air hole and just see if any difference is made when that comes off and it starts to pull air from the bottom. Right, <clears throat> so I'm going to drop some sticks into the riser tube. Gizmo down there. Don't show what happens when I. In oh God, this is hot. When I introduce some extra oxygen, and believe me, it gets hotter. You can instantly feel the updraft. Close it. You can you can feel the heat decreases when you close that thing. when you open it up you just get an instant burst of heat it's like a blower being turned on uh, I've put the riser tube in it just doesn't seem to make much difference so the, sorry the maypole tube in the sensor just doesn't seem to matter what matters is that hole in the bottom that gives you a good burst of oxygen into the tube and everything just seems to blow through better so I've decided what I'm going to do is incorporate that into the base of the stove just a tube that I can open and close um, so all in all mission successful been burning about 15 minutes now the whole thing is just ridiculously hot just close that up So I'll put the stove back together now, uh, it, everything stopped smoking, the vermiculite. So I'll let all this lot cool down and I'll mount it back into my stove. And that's the new setup I've done, the vortex entry into the chamber. That's, by the way, that's the old riser tube. Uh, don't make one out of steel because that's what's going to happen to it. It's probably, it's probably lost 18 inches, 2 foot of tube, it's just completely burnt away. And that was what, uh, about 2 mil, 2.5 mil thick I think that stuff. It lasted a couple of weeks, so that's, that's don't use steel. Right, I've welded that box up now into there. Uh, I need to weld a plate on the bottom of it to sit the shroud on as well. We go in there, that's all I've ended on. The bottle is a bit butchered, but I'm going to have to weld some pieces around this new tube because that was for the old entry. That's a view down inside the bottle. This is the exhaust on the back. The exhaust box, there's just a hole cut in to take the pipe work. I suppose you could just cut a hole on the top there. If you want to, if you didn't want to mess about with the tubing inside, and just literally just come straight off that. And that was a cleaning plate that I put in just to clean through to that bottom flue, and it also gives you access into the uh, bottom of the stove as well, so you can clean out in there should you have to around the riser tube. The firebox is just the firebox. I've explained this before, but. It's just a couple of flaps on the side, then uh, pre-warming air entries, the hole in the back, another door on that side. I mounted the, the door glass by a couple of little things there with a couple of studs on the back of the door, welded on one side. <clears throat> and then put two screws on the other side so I could take the door on and off. When I make this firebox, when I rebuild this firebox in the summer, when it warms up a bit, I'm just going to cut that top off, just bin all that lot, uh, and make a new one out of stainless. That's obviously the lid for the stove that just can take on and off. Um, 
what was maybe not apparent on the other this is just a thin strip of old bandsaw steel that I just tacked on all the way around so that the stove can just uh, just drop into that I put a bit of that asbestos not asbestos fire you know um, fire rope fire seal rope around that and just sat the bottle on it and then wipe this with a bit of sealant and that was more than good enough Right, that's the uh, the insulate the tube for the insulated riser. I've had to put a patch on the bottom of it because the the hole for the old riser tube entry was just too big. So I've just cut a piece off that, and I've just spot welded another piece onto it there. That's a bit of one. I think it's 0.75 mil stainless stuff that was I found lying around. It was painted. But that stood up really well that to the to the fire. Right, so I'll get all this lot put back together again. I don't think there's anything else you need to know on that score really. I can't wait to get this thing going and get the workshop warm again. It's been horrendous in here <laughs> working on this at night. Just hate the cold. Hate the cold. Okay. I have uh, just put the stove together. Everything's welded up. If you see the little lever there, that's to control the air intake on the extra air intake on the bottom of the stove. And it just moves side to side and it closes the hole off. Uh, I've packed the riser tube. I've not done a very good job at the top because it's a little bit uh, uneven but if you see down in the hole I'll just move the bottom lever you can just see the little vent thing come in and close the hole off. It's probably better. There. So I just move that to the side I can give it air or I can just have it running as normal. I've thrown some refractory round the bottom, mixed it with some perlite just to seal everything up so there's no air entering anywhere. Uh, and I'm done. I've just got to weld the firebox back on the front of it, uh, connect the flues up, and we're good to go. Well, the stove's back together and functioning well. Had a fire going for about an hour, something like that. Nice and warm, once again. Right, well, the net gain from this vortex experiment is the fire's actually not burning as much wood as it was before, it's slowed it down. I don't know whether that's because I've reduced the amount of, um, what should we say, volume going into the riser tube, or because of the vortex, but it's, it's certainly burning well. The temperature now is, what we are, just over 600 degrees. And the temperature of the workshop is um, what we got 19.8, and there's 29.9 degrees coming from the back of the bench. The only slight drawback is because I've decreased the amount of air entering the, the riser tube, there is a slight puff. Of uh, smoke coming out the box now. Not much, you can just about get a whiff of it, but I burn it with the door closed anyway, so that just isn't an issue. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm burning less wood for my book, as they say, and getting 
more heat out the stove so it's an overall gain I don't know what else I can say really <laughs> has it been worth it? yeah I think it has been worth it. it it's not getting as hot as it was before but maybe that will mean that the rocket stove internals are going to last longer because before they were getting too hot I mean it was getting around to 900 degrees burning it like mad but it was burning a lot of timber that's the drawback the back of the firebox just between that bit of insulation and the back of fireblox is, is, is glowing cherry red it's, it's very hot so I'll wind that up and finish. If you've got any questions, just ask me. Be happy to answer them. If you like, like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. Because my next project is building the wood burner that I intend to fit in my house. Uh, and I'm going to incorporate a back boiler into that. Again, a rocket stove design with a back boiler with a firebox on the side. I'll explain it all maybe in a few diagrams later but I'm going to start building that shortly to replace the standard hunter wood burner which I've now got which is good but it burns a lot of timber so I'm going to incorporate this design into a new stove we'll see how that goes cheers for now bye